feel very honored. Und wie ihr hört, spreche ich deutsche Sprache. And as you hear, I'm speaking German. Und ich habe gedacht, ähm, ich bringe euch das erste deutsche Wort bei. And I thought I would teach you your first German word. Das ist sehr einfach. Which is very simple. Das heißt hallo. It is hello. Und meint hi. So, that means hi. Und dann kommt man zu deinem Nachbarn links so, und rechts. So, take the person next to you. Hallo. Hallo. Oder hi. So das ist kein einfacher, ähm, das ist nichts Einfaches, worüber wir sprechen. So it's not a simple subject we're speaking about. Und bevor ich einfach über einige Dinge, die ich weitergeben werde, and before I want to speak about some of the things I'd like to share, möchte ich euch ein kurzes Video zeigen. I'd like to show you a brief video. Mit über das, was wir mit dem Marsch des Lebens machen. Which shows you what we're doing with the March of Life. Und es gibt einen kurzen Einblick. And it just gives you a brief overview. Und dann möchte ich einfach einige Gedanken einfach mitteilen. And then I would like to share a few thoughts with you. Thank you.
So this was just a brief insight into the larger life. And after I've shared a few thoughts, we'll be able to see something about Poland later on. And I don't know what you are thinking of when you hear the word Germany. And Germany today actually represents the fact of a nation working for its history. It also represents economic stability. Und steht an der Seite Israels. Standing firmly with Israel. Und doch ist es so, dass über Deutschland eine Welt des Schweins ist. And yet, Germany still is covered by a veil of silence. Väter und Großväter schwiegen über die Nationalsitzung. Fathers and grandfathers remained silent concerning the Holocaust. Und auch die Kinder und die Enkel sprachen. And even their children and grandchildren would never speak about it. Unser Katzen als Deutsche in den Generationen war wie eingeschlossen unter einem Schweigen. And the hearts of us as Germans, even throughout the generations, they were like closed and hardened. Man kann es sich kaum vorstellen. And it's hard to imagine. Aber der Tod von 6 Millionen Juden über den Holocaust kam in der Geschichte der Familien kaum vor. You can hardly imagine that the deaths of 6 million Jews and the Holocaust were just not featured in German family conversations. Und tief in uns verborgen war auch diese eine tiefe Wurzel von and deeply hidden inside of us is this deep root of anti-Semitism. For einigen Jahren gab es einen Expertenbericht der Regierung. Just a few years ago, the government published a report by some experts. Und sie stellten fest, dass in großen Bereichen Antisemitismus in Deutschland verbreitet ist. And they actually found that in large areas and aspects of German society, anti-Semitism was still rife and widespread. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir das genau so. Wir sehen das in Polen, wir sehen das in den europäischen Ländern. Aber wenn wir uns umschauen, in Europa sehen wir, dass das gleiche Problem ist wie in Deutschland, in Frankreich und in allen anderen europäischen Ländern. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, sehen wir auch Antisemitismus auch in Amerika. Und wenn wir uns umschauen, Und das ist ein Antisemitismus, wie man latent nennt. Das heißt, man erkennt ihn nicht sofort. That means you don't recognize it immediately. Er ist nicht sofort aggressiv. It isn't immediately aggressive in its way. Sondern er ist in allen Bereichen der Gesellschaft durch Gleichgültigkeit. But it is actually represented in all areas of society through its indifference. Und das Kennzeichen dieser Gleichgültigkeit ist das Schweigen. And the mark of this indifference is silence. Und ich möchte zu Beginn meines Vortrags eine These machen. And to start off on my presentation, I would like to propose a thesis. Weil die Frage ist, wie kann heutzutage man wieder zu Täter werden in dieser Zeit des Nationalismus? Because the question is, how is it possible that today we become perpetrators just in the same way as it happened? During the Nazi era. Or if we take a look back to the Nazi era, all the terrible images we've just been presented with, how is it possible for very ordinary men and women to become perpetrators of the Holocaust? Some of them were just as old as you are. How did they become murderers, mass murderers? Und meine These, die ich zu Beginn des Vortrags sage, and my thesis, which I would like to suggest at the beginning of this presentation, wenn wir heute wieder zu Tätern werden, is that it is possible for us to become perpetrators again today? Wenn wir uns ein Teil eines ideologischen Systems sind, if we become part of an ideological system. So in nach in Deutschland nach dem Krieg, da formte sich ein Bild. So in Germany after the war, they had a certain image that was formed. Then, man stellt sich vor, da waren einige Massenmörder oder einige Monster, die es gab. People just imagined, oh well, there had been some monsters, some mass murders, only very few who'd been at fault. Und diese Monster, die haben die anderen einfach missbraucht und zu verdrängen. And these were the monsters that abused everybody else, turning them into murderers. Aber das ist ein falsches Bild. But that. And first of all, I would like to tell you about my father. My father was born in 
And so this ideology of the community, of fellowship of the people, this included everybody who lived within that society. Unless you really literally step back and say, I'm not going to be part of this. So everybody who lived in that system became an onlooker, became part of it, and he knew what was going on. And so this national socialist ideology was actually quite attractive on the outside. There were youth camps, marches, demonstrations with torches. You believed in success, but at the same time, there was such a bitter enmity which excluded everyone who was not part of it. And who was not part of it? It was the Jews. There was an exclusivity that showed no mercy. They were just not part of it. And you know, this system is called the racist system of exclusivity. So everyone who's not part and included in that ideology, they are excluded, they are outside. And they're not part of it. And you see, this is the reason why the deportation of the Jewish part of the population did not cause any form of protest. Because the population had become part of the system. And I, as a pastor, call it part of a demonic system. And the so-called parasites or those who damaged the people, the race, You see, the Holocaust first started in people's minds. And it wasn't a switch that was pulled at some point. And there were only a very few monsters, people, criminals who did it. But it was like a brainwashing that took place for the entire population. And so the population who were there was standing by and watching, even though they might have just left an onlookers, still they became guilty. Still they became perpetrators. They became part of the Holocaust. And so they complete a total of German population who stood by and watched Watch the Jews being deported. Watch the, how the Jews were robbed of their possessions. And watched how their companies, their, all of their possessions were just taken away from them. Who simply stood by passively watching and who remained silent. They became part of this murderous system of the Holocaust. You see, once again, today, we can become part of the system by simply watching. Unless we break the silence. If we just look on to anti-Semitism, if we just look on with injustice or racism. So these And so this ideology of the community of race had certain ideas it formed. It was almost like a religious system. So And there were different principles which the people tried to follow. And and so everything that happened within the system was the entire population being swallowed.
sworn into a faithful following of these regulations. Man kann das kaum verstehen And today it's really hard to understand that. But for the people back then, it was really attractive. It was about all the uh, marksmen who got into associations. And that went on into all other areas, so it became a true mass movement. Even in the schools, the school organizations. And so every aspect of society and life was permeated. So oh, the German population became part of the National Socialist murder system. And this made them part of the Holocaust. And for most part, this actually happened without them even realizing it. And if they did realize it, they never did anything against it. And then there is a second area to the system. And this was also part of the Holocaust. Because in Germany, the enmity of the Slavic people was very, very big. Because it was the German mentality to actually feel superior and raise themselves up above everything that came from the East or that was living in the East, so these were the Slavic people. And we saw that on the maps that there was a lot of children. So Hitler wanted in Osten Europa. So Hitler tried to occupy and, and attack the East. So it's got the Ausdruck Volk ohne Raum. And they call themselves, the Germans call themselves, the people without territory. And they indoctrinated the Germans, they said, we have the right to the nation of the East to take. And they indoctrinated the German people to make them think we have actually the right to conquer and occupy the nations living in the East. And so wurde Polen überfallen. And this is how they attacked Poland. Aber Polen wurde nicht einfach überfallen wie von einer Armee. But Poland was not just attacked like with an army. Sondern es war von vornherein das Ziel die Vernichtung der Bevölkerung. But actually, right from the outset, it was their goal to destroy the complete population of Poland. Von dem Einfall der deutschen Wehrmacht eine Nation, in der jüdisches Leben in besonderer Weise blüht. And Poland, prior to the German invasion, had been a nation where Jewish life was able to flourish in a very, very special way. And the Jewish population in Poland was the largest in numbers in all of Europe. And when the German Wehrmacht invaded Poland, they spent the first four months shooting tens of thousands of people. They burned entire villages to the ground. And they would uh, commit pogroms. They had mass shootings. So, so in the country of Poland alone, six million people were killed. And three million of them were Jews. But in the right cover of five million Polish And of the 3.5 million Jewish Polish people, only 30 or 40,000 would go on to survive. And I am sharing this. Because if you try to imagine such huge numbers, six million people shot, murdered, It wasn't just individuals, monsters, criminals who did that. The Täter waren ganz normale deutsche Männer und Frauen. The perpetrators were very ordinary German men and women. Es waren unsere Väter und Mütter. Our fathers and mothers. Unsere großen Väter und Großmütter. Our grandfathers and grandmothers. Es waren ganz normale Soldaten. They were ordinary soldiers. 
did know and see what was going on in the Holocaust. Von den allein in Polen, von den 200,000 aktiven Treffern. Just in Poland alone, these 200,000 active perpetrators wurden hinterher nur 500 Treffer bestraft. Only 500 of them ever got punished for their crimes. Wenn wir nur kurz in die Sowjetunion schauen, and if we just take a quick, quick glance into the Soviet Union, and maybe we'll just not think about the, you know, modern day political problems we have there. But you see, we as Germans, we attacked and invaded the Soviet Union. And right from the outset, it was the plan, the German plan, to destroy the complete Soviet population. And the high command of the German army at the time gave order to use any means of force against women and children. And it was the plan to have the Slavic population die by starvation. Und 27 Millionen Menschen leben in der Sowjetunion. Sie äh, wurden getötet und umgebracht und wurden umgebracht. And 27 million Soviet lives were lost through the German actions there. Es waren 2 Millionen sowjetische Juden. 2 Millionen Soviet Jews. Und Millionen von der Zivilbevölkerung, vielen der Gewichtspolitik zu machen. And millions and millions of the civilian population fell victim to the German policy of destruction. Warum ich das? But why am I telling you this? Weißt du, als der Zweite Weltkrieg zu Ende war, you know, when the Second World War ended, da, da gab es falsche Vorstellungen über den Zweiten Weltkrieg. There suddenly turned up these false ideas about the Second World War. Ja, die Vorstellung war, da gab es einige, die das vollzogen haben. So the idea was, oh, well, there was just a few who did it. So die SS but the fact was that this mass murder had been an integral part of the war. And after 1945, this image was continued and there were entire lives, historical lives that were developed. And these lives actually went on for the next 20, even 30 years. And this historic lie said, well, actually, I don't have anything to do with it. And the German population withdrew into silence. And that is the very history of our own city. It is the story of the city of Tübingen, where I come from. Schauen wir nach 1945, da war die Bevölkerung in Tübingen zwar immer noch meistens Nationalsozialismus. You see, even after 1945, the population of Tübingen just remained national socialist. Die Tübinger Universität, die wurde gegründet durch eine Marxistin. The University of Tübingen was founded in the Middle Ages by an and for the next 400 years, Jews were expelled from the region. And the University of Tübingen was founded in 1300. The SS experts And during the Nazi era, era 300 of the main SS mass murderers of the Einsatzgruppen, they were trained in Tübingen University. And just these 300 people were responsible for the death of 700,000 Jews alone. At that university, they founded a special institute for so-called racial hygiene. And so it was the intellectual hotbed for the Nazis. From 1945 to the 90s, there were still Nazis. And so from 1945, well into the 90s, there were still Nazi symbols on public display 
Und Tausende sind getötet worden in diesen Interpretationen. 
and thousands upon thousands were killed in those camps while mining shale. We have here in Grada the graph you see at the end of the Zweite Weltkrieg. And we just saw the map of the end of the Second World War. But it was a kurz vor der Befreiung der Kasernzonsmarke. Just before the concentration were actually, concentration camps were actually liberated. Gab es die Todesmärsche. That there were the death marches. Und das heißt, die Lager wurden aufgelöst. And so that means that when the camps were liquidated. Und hunderttausende Hirten auf die Straße. Hundreds of thousands were put out on the street and marched from one place to the next. Wir hörten, wie sie erschossen wurden. We have heard how they were shot by the score. Und wir konnten auf diesen Märschen, auf diesen Todes, auf den Routen der Todesmärsche erlangen zu kommen. And what we felt was that we had to follow the routes of those death marches. Und wir überlegten, wie wir das tun sollen. And so we were wondering, how could we do this? Und wir wollten diese Route gehen, eines Todesmarsches von Tübingen aus zur Konzentrationslager der Gedenkstätte Dachau. And there had been one particular death march from the concentration camps across to Tübingen to the concentration camp of Dachau. And this was the route that we wanted to retrace. Und auf einmal bekam ich Anrufe. But all of a sudden I received phone calls. Freunde aus der jüdischen Gemeinschaft riefen uns an. Friends from Jewish communities started calling us. Holocaust survivors and fragte, können wir mitlaufen? Können wir dabei sein? And Holocaust survivors asked us, can we walk with you? Und wir luden sie an. And so we invited them. Es waren Holocaust survivors der auch der zweiten und dritten Generation. And then there were survivors of the second and third generation. Und so erinnere ich mich an die ersten Veranstaltungen, dass wir zusammen waren. And I still remember the very first meeting that we had when everyone came together. Weißt du, die Nachkommen der Holocaust überleben, sie tragen immer noch den Schrecken und den Last ihrer Holocaust, ihrer Väter, Großväter, ihrer Großväter. You see, the descendants of the survivors, even down to the second and third generation, they still carry the trauma, the pain, the horrors of the Holocaust in their own lives as their burdens. Und viele hatten Angst, nach Deutschland zu kommen. And many of them were actually afraid of coming to Germany. Viele reagierten auf die deutsche Sprache. Many had a very negative response when they heard the German language. Because the trauma of their own parents and grandparents still came up in their lives. And so I do remember that first meeting. And we were together with them. And then we also had descendants whose fathers and grandfathers had been members of the SS. Und wir saßen zusammen und sie gingen hin und sie wuschen in die Füße und nahmen sie in den Arm. Und es war wie eine Versöhnung unter ihnen. Und so wir saßen zusammen und dann diese Descendants von den SS-Perpetrators, sie erobten die Descendants von den Survivors und sie haben sie wirklich ihre Füße gewaschen. Und dann haben sie sie erobten. Und es war so eine Atmosphäre von Reconciliation und Vergebnis. Und sie baten sie um Vergebung. Und so haben sie sie erobten. Sie sagten, unsere Väter und Großväter sind nicht gekommen und sie haben nie um Vergebung. And they said, our fathers and grandfathers never came to you. They never asked your forgiveness. But we want to say we're sorry. We want to ask forgiveness. And what happened was beautiful reconciliation. And maybe you saw the young lady in the video. And this Veranstaltung, was dort war, war genau ein Ausschnitt bei den Gasten. And the event that was shown was the meeting we had at the gas chambers in Auschwitz. It was a memorial event. But this young lady has a very special history. Because she found out that her own grandfather had been an engineer in the camp of Auschwitz. And her grandfather had helped to set up the gas chambers. Und sie war so betroffen und so erschüttert. And she was so heartbroken about this. Sie wusste, ich kann das nicht für mich behalten. Ich muss hingehen und vergeben. That she knew, I can't keep the story just to myself. But I need to go to Poland. I need to ask forgiveness. Und so geht sie in die Veranstaltung. Und es ist ganz oft mit vielen Holocaust-Überlebten zusammen, um die Geschichte zu erzählen. So she goes to meetings and events like this, and many times she goes up to the survivors and asks them forgiveness. Und so könnte ich vielen Geschichten erzählen. And I could share many stories like that. Ich sage auch, wir Deutsche sind das. Wir kommen aus dem Land der Unverdienten. And I often say that we as Germans, we 
Yeah, from the country of unmerited grace. Ich hätte mich auf keinerlei Recht hier vorne zu stehen und davon zu erzählen. I actually have no right whatsoever to stand here and talk about these things. Und Väter waren Täter und Massenmörder. It was our fathers and grandfathers who were perpetrators of mass murder. Aber ich glaube, wir haben eine wichtige Aufgabe. But I believe we do have one important duty. Weil wir können aus der Vergangenheit lernen. Because we can learn from the past. Wir können lernen, dass wenn wir das schweigen und wenn wir das We can learn that even if we just remain silent and passive, it is still possible to become perpetrators. And when we allow anti-Semitism in our schools and our universities, even our families right where we are, it is very easy for us to become perpetrators again. When we become part of a system that is against Jews, that would exclude Jews, just like National Socialists, we can become perpetrators again. And anti-Semitism is actually much more than just being against the Jews. It is like a deep and hidden sea that is ready to break out at any given moment. And that actually goes way back in history, far beyond the National Socialism. It actually reaches way back into church history when the early church started separating from its Jewish roots. And it's turned man into the measure of all things. So a mark of anti-Semitism is indifference. It's is a downplaying. It's an anti-attitude. But also part of this is to deny Israel's right of existence. And so today there is a very modern face of anti-Semitism. Actually, it hasn't really changed at all. And still it has a different face. And it's called modern anti-Semitism. And during National Socialism, there was a rhetoric that would demonize the Jewish people. And they were, their value was completely taken away. They were devalued. And just by the way the propaganda spoke about them, there was a certain image that was uh, put on the Jewish people. So, for the Jewish people, they used names of animals instead. And so they were dehumanized. And by dehumanizing them, they were actually robbed of their legitimate right to live. And if you take a look at the modern anti semitism today, you find exactly the same. You find these very three elements. And it is the scientists who say that these three elements point to anti-Semitism. So first of all, Jews are demonized again. So actually people have a very negative attitude and mindset when they hear the term Jewish. And the second thing is that a double standard is applied. For instance, there are people who say, well, it must be possible to criticize Israel. And then my question is, well, how many other countries do we criticize? Oh, well, I don't. So, it's a double standard, right? So you have a different standard that applies to Israel. A different standard applies to Jewish life than is applied to other nations. And the third point of modern anti-Semitism is a delegitimization. So you deny Israel's right to exist. And you deny the right to exist for Jerusalem. 
to learn from this truth. Das zweite ist, wenn wir aus der Wahrheit lernen. And the second thing is, once we have learned from the truth, dürfen wir nicht schweigen, wir müssen darüber sprechen. We must not remain silent. We need to speak about it. Und deswegen sage ich dir einfach aus meinem Hintergrund heraus. And that's why coming from my background, schau sehr genau hin, wenn Menschen ausgeschlossen sind, ausgegrenzt sind. I have to tell you, take a very close look when you notice people being excluded anywhere. If they are excluded because of their religion, because of their race, because of the color of their skin, or because they are Jewish, or maybe because they are Christian. So take a close look. And never be among those who are don't be just an onlooker. Because, because those who are onlookers become perpetrators. The third point, the third point is what it says in the Word of God, and we can read that in the Bible. Whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. And that is part of the March of Remembrance. So dankbar, dass 2009 der Marsch des Lebens für Bewegung nach Amerika. And I am so grateful that in 2009 the March of Life movement came up to the United States. Der heißt hier March of Remembrance. And so here it's called March of Remembrance. Es gibt Okasions erinnern. And it's about remembering. Es ist aus der Geschichte lernen. Learning in history. Und dass wir daraus ein Zeichen setzen für die Gegend. And making a statement for this present time. And of course, first of all, against anti-Semitism and against hatred of Jews. But also against injustice. And so that is, brings me to my fourth point. In the Bible again we read, for science's sake, it will not remain silent. Until its righteousness shines like the dawn. And the nations will see its glory. And so I believe we are blessed when we raise our voice. And when people can hear that we are standing in friendship with Israel. And that we love Jewish life and stand with them and walk with them. And this is also what the March of Remembrance stands for. So I thank you very much for this time here. And I wish you God's blessing. And if there are any questions, please do ask. Or if there's time, we can show the video of the marching forward. Thank you very much.